Hello friends. Today we are going to learn about the effect of fatigue on simple muscle curve. Under this uh, experiment, the aim for this experiment is to demonstrate the effect of fatigue on simple muscle curve and the apparatus that are used are very similar to the one we have used for eliciting a simple muscle curve. But the drum speed here is fast gear and the fastest speed. For the electrical connections, we are using single induction shock with the myograph drum, keeping it in the primary, uh, primary circuit. Coming to the procedure, the first thing that we have to do is we have to dissect a fog, isolate the sciatic nerve and gastrocnemius muscle and record a simple muscle curve. Stimulus is in the form of submaximal induced brake shock and we set the drum at the fastest speed and record three consecutive contractions in quick successions and we observe the beneficial effect of these graphs. Now coming to the procedure, we are moving the writing lever away from the drum and we are allowing the drum to rotate. So we are actually giving the stimulus and the muscle is contracting. But what we have to do is we have to stop the drum. You know what have we been doing is we were actually, you know, the drum was moving separately and the muscle was getting contracted and but the writing lever was not touching the drum. So we were not recording all the contractions. But what we do, by the time we have finished the ninth contraction, we stop the drum. We adjust the writing lever in such a way that we are able to record the 10th, 20th, 40th, 60th and consecutively the other curves. So what we will get here is after first three uh, curves, we will be getting the recording of the simple muscle curve at different time intervals. And what we do is what we have to observe as what will happen to these contractions. Let me put my laser and show you what will happen to these contractions which are happening here, you know, which we are recording here. So first three contractions followed by 10th, 20th, 40th, 50th, 60th, 80th like that. What is that we observe here is as the muscle is getting fatigued. So what will happen? There will be changes which will be happening on the simple muscle curve. The amplitude of contraction will keep on decreasing. The muscle is now in a state of contraction. It's failing to relax completely. So we are not finding that the curve is coming back to the baseline and you know it is giving the physiological curve as we have seen in other uh, types of simple muscle curves. Now once the response becomes too feeble, we move away the drum you know and the writing lever away from the drum and then what we do is immediately we take the uh, stimulating electrode and put it near to the muscle and stimulate the muscle once we stimulate the muscle we record a curve although the curves amplitude is very small but we do record a simple muscle curve this curve that we record is now called as the direct curve then what is the next thing we do we wash the nerve muscle preparation for few minutes to wash away the metabolites and then we place the stimulating electrode back to the sciatic nerve and then we try to record another curve and this curve we name it as the recovery curve now this is a full uh, picture of the fatigue curves so let us just go and see the components of it the first thing here we have marked the point of stimulus these are the first three contractions. This was the first contraction, second contraction and third contraction. What we observe here is the subsequent uh, contractions. They have a beneficial effect and we find that there is increase in their height of contraction. But as we are recording the 10th, 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th, 60th and 70th recording, we find that there is a decrease in the height of contraction. So the height of contraction is getting decreased. And what do I find? Although here only it is shown direct stimulation, but we will try to explain it as a separate graph. What is that we observe here? That there is shifting of the baseline. The baseline has shifted up and then came down, but there is a shifting of the baseline. The other thing that is very prominent here is that the muscle is failing to relax. It is remaining in the state of contraction. It's not that it is, no, it is having like this. See? Initially, the first three, the 10th, 20th, they were all were coming down and then giving the physiological curve. But as we went to 
the 60th and 70th curve or 50th curve they do not come back to the baseline they remain in a state of contraction this state is called as contracture remainder now this is a picture of a direct curve and that how do i observe uh, obtain this direct curve once the muscle has fatigued take the electrode stimulate the muscle directly you get a direct curve then wash the nerve muscle preparation wash away the whole metabolites and then you stimulate the sciatic nerve as before and try to record what you get is a recovery curve what were the observations for the fatigue curves first three contractions 1 2 3 you know second and third were of higher amplitude or of a height of contraction as compared to each other now how was this these three contractions are taller than the previous curve this is mainly due to beneficial effect and what is this beneficial effect beneficial effect is due to increased availability of neurotransmitter increased availability of calcium ion increase in temperature and decrease in viscosity as we have already discussed about it but still will repeat it here now at first the baseline shifts upward and again comes downward so as i have told you for 10 20 30 it there was a shift of the baseline upward by the time we reach to the 50th 60th and 70th contraction recording there is that this uh, baseline is shifting downward now this phenomena where there was a shift upward followed by downward is now called as primary contracture what are the other observations that we see although after few contractions the height of contraction gradually decreases we find that there is a gradual decrease in the height of contraction and the baseline is shifted and it is not reaching to the zero or the baseline now or the zero line what we call as zero axis here now this is known as the secondary contracture or contracture remainder as i have explained little earlier so this is the contracture remainder as observed here you see this is not coming back to the zero line it remains little higher up now what is the definition of fatigue very often asked what is fatigue as you can see here in the picture we have you know a lady who is fatigued now fatigue is a temporary reduction of working capacity of an organism of an organ and as a whole there is a prolonged you know it is you have gone for a prolonged exertion and now you are totally fatigued you are unable to do the work perform the work is this a reversible or irreversible phenomena it is a reversible phenomena and it passes off after you give a rest after you take some uh, health drinks or you know you wash out the metabolites in an isolated nerve muscle preparation if the electrical stimulation is applied for long period of time there is reduction in the height of contraction this is what we have seen in our fatigue curve so this is showing that the muscle the neuro nerve muscle preparation has gone for a fatigue there are few questions which come up and they are very important for us what is that what are the different causes of fatigue in an isolated nerve muscle preparation so how will i say what are the different causes of it so the different causes of fatigue are exhaustion of the neurotransmitter here the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine depletion of atp accumulation of waste products and lactic acids and pyruvic acids hypoxia there is a decreased level of oxygen at the tissue level and there is decreased sensitivity of the motor end plate to the acetylcholine next question is what is the site of fatigue on nerve muscle preparation and why see when we try to take the fatigue curve we had stimulated the nerve and then we saw that there is onset of fatigue and slowly the muscle is not getting relaxed then what did we do we did a direct muscle curve and what does it show that the muscle is muscle response and we find a direct curve this indicates that the muscle is not the site of fatigue nerves by their property are unfatigable then what is remaining the junction between the nerve and the muscle hence nerve muscle preparation in a nerve muscle preparation neuromuscular junction is the site of fatigue there is where we have the exhaustion of the neurotransmitters accumulation of waste products and all that so since synapses or the junctions are vulnerable to hypoxia and acidic environment so the site of fatigue in a nerve muscle preparation is the neuromuscular junction then what are the other causes what are the physiological changes that you get to see when a muscle is fatigued or you know more than the physiological i think it's more of the physical changes that we get to see in the muscles uh, 
so the physical changes which are produced when the muscles gets fatigued due to continuous or repeated stimulation is what that the muscles become rigid they become swollen the excitability and the contractibility and conductivity in the muscle are markedly decreased and the muscle chronaxy is also decreased coming to the again another question what is that what is the effect of fatigue on the phases of nerve muscle preparation uh, and the curve what did we see that there was reduction in the height of contraction the muscle was not completely relaxing so we found a contracture remainder okay so there was that uh, the latent period was increased the contraction period was decreased but the amplitude of contraction that is the height of contraction was decreased relaxation period of the muscle twitches were prolonged and the baseline goes up there is delayed relaxation due to overstretching and passage of fibers into a delta stage which is partly reversible so after too many contractions the muscles enter into a state of prolonged reversible shortening and the muscle shows a contracture remainder or incomplete relaxation now what are the causes of recovery how can we hasten this recovery so the causes of recovery are the release of fresh uh, neurotransmitters that is acetylcholine there is removal of the waste metabolites in case you are washing a nerve muscle preparation you are kind of removing it but in an intact muscle uh, in a live body there will be blood circulation which is going to remove these metabolites there will be supply of new uh, atps and so recovery will be fastened so how can we recovery can be fastened it can be done if we keep on washing the nerve muscle preparation with ringer solution in human what is the first site of fatigue very often asked questions and the answer is synapse so the first site of fatigue is synapse as in case of frog nerve muscle uh, neuromuscular junction was the site of fatigue in case of humans synapses are the site of fatigue what are the precautions that has to be taken when we are doing this experiment the first thing that we have to do see that the all the contractions they should be recorded on the same point of stimulus so we are not shifting the point of stimulus neither we are changing the strength of the stimulus then what we do in order to get a good graph some of the contractions are left unrecorded so we record the 10th 20th 30th 40th and 50th graph now to facilitate the recovery what we do is we pour the ringer solutions and we have to uh, you know kind of replace it with fresh ringer solution now the next last question is how are you going to delay the fatigue in the body fatigue in the body can be delayed or postponed by simultaneous stimulation of the sympathetic fibers of the muscles this is thought to cause the effect through norepinephrine diffusing from the adrenergic nerve fibers which is going to innervate the blood vessels of the muscles so this is also called as oribelli's effect thank you that's all so let's hope that we are not too fatigued with this graph and we do turn ourselves into a state of active thank you all